TPC, how are you all doing? The rain hasn't come yet, but this afternoon it will apparently. So I thought I'd just put this little video out on a couple of technical pipe smoking topics. Um, housekeeping, of course. Working my way through this lovely jar of Pembroke Esoterica, the Margate with cognac on it. Just beautiful tobacco, so smooth, just the right level of sweetness for me, perfect. Well, the two topics, um, oh, this is a Jack the Piper Jewelers Brass Tamper, lovely. And uh, not by accident, I've got a couple of Zippo like, actually this is the Nimrod Admiral lighter and that's the Zippo gold plated because um, one of the topics is about the wool you put in your Zippo. Chacon pipe, Pipe Club of London, that is the pipe for this year. Give you a couple of um, shots of it because it's easier to show the stamp and everything. Here we are. So why not we start with the Zippos? There's been several videos already, um, and all credit to the colleagues of YTPC, uh, Cane Rod Piper, Paladin, and one or two others have brought up the topic of the cotton wool filling in Zippo or Zippo-like lighters, fuel lighters that use the liquid fuel. And um, it's a great, innovation and discovery that they brought to us because uh, this Japanese cotton is definitely superior to the regular cotton wool that they put in these kind of lighters. Um, so I bought some of these cotton bacon, I don't know why they call it bacon, you know, um, Japanese wool fillings and uh, cotton wool fillings are just like this. In little tubes, uh, there's no, some people thought it has metal around it or, you know, but that's not the case, at least not in this particular one, version two. There are other examples of it. The reason I bought this is it comes in sort of smaller packets. So I got uh, one for my address here and one for the other one in the mountains. And there's plenty in this to do maybe, I don't know, five lighters at least, you know. So that's really enough. I'll put a link down where you can get this. Uh, you find it on Amazon and um, many other websites. Um, and what good friend Paladin said and, and others is it will extend your, your fuel life in the lighter and uh, has superior properties. So, so I, I thought I must look at that because I've done one or two videos, as you know, other ways that you can save fuel by putting a, a, a rubber band like this or a silicon band around a joint and I did all kinds of measurements about that and um, the other innovation was to put this to put this rubber grommet 
and the base. So you're trying to seal up better places where the liquid and, and above all the vapor of the fuel can escape. And that's around this joint here or here, which was completely open with just a piece of felt in the normal design of Zippos. So attached below is my previous video about that, that and the measurements I did and all, all of that. But um, even so, I'm always open to other innovations and I thought I must try this out, you know, because if it gives you another week of uh, life with fuel in it, that's the main gripe that people have with fuel lighters is either it's the taste and they don't like that, which can't really do much about that, but it's usually about the fact that after a few days they were they were not running anymore, that most of the fuel had evaporated out of, out of the gaps. And um, with the rubber grommet and the band around the seal here, I said more or less definitely will take you up to two weeks, um, you know, depending on how often you use it, but uh, it's, it's definitely gonna be an improvement over just a few days. So that's that. But what I've done now is I've switched all the wool in my lighters with this. And uh, this rather amateurish sketch that I've done here shows you the anatomy of a Zippo lighter. And um, one of the very important additional innovations that my colleagues, Yardism and some others, T told us that you must make sure that the thread of the wick goes all the way through the cotton wool matrix down to the bottom to make sure that it's got a chance to come in contact with the fuel level and can wick it up to where your flame is because when you buy a Zippo very, very often a lot, a lot of this wick thread here is just at the top and isn't reaching down throughout the whole capacity of the Zippo. And that definitely also makes a big difference in getting a decent flame and fuel life. Um, because what I noticed is the, um, the fuel life has a problem that about 25% of your fuel at the bottom here is still there but you can't light your wick because uh, the wick just can't draw it up to where the flame needs to be. So the last 25% of your fuel in, in, in the Zippo is kind of wasted or, or you know, not, not doing its job. Um, the capillary action of this wick is just not good enough to, to, to bring it up. The answer, to keep the story short, is I changed it in my lighter, one, one or two, this one first. Now I've done all the others because it really works, really works well. Um, so this has got the Japanese wool in it. And it actually gives you a better flame because with the rubber grommet, I noticed it was a slightly reduced flame up here but it was conserving fuel very well and now with this baking cotton as they call it i'm both getting a good flame and i'm getting a very good performance and i've been using this one sort of off and off and on maybe not every day and with this new cotton and all the other measures, I'm getting three weeks out of it, which is pretty good for a fuel, a fuel lighter uh, of the Zippo design. So that's certainly something I 
I endorse and um, I thank my colleagues for drawing it to my attention um, because I've got, I, I must have six or seven fuel lighters like this, but this is specifically aimed at Zippo or Zippo-like uh, lighters or the, the knockoff versions, you, you could do, use the same thing. Here with the uh, Nimrod Admiral, see, beautiful big flame, perfect for a pipe. And uh, I'm absolutely sure I'm going to have, probably it's, it's given almost another week to the measures that I, I put on there. Um, and three weeks life of a lighter when you're actually using it's pretty good, huh? pretty good. As I said, the links are below. Um, the second topic I wanted to talk to you about is Carnauba, Carnauba wax, however you want to pronounce, pronounce it. Um, and I've been using Carnauba wax um, primarily uh, sometimes when I find the, the stem is very tight and, and won't go in smoothly to the shank, I've been rubbing a block piece of carnauba on the tenon here and uh, it makes it much easier to get the stem in. But what I was looking for is rather than just taking a solid piece of carnauba and rubbing it 50 times, couldn't I get um, either a paste or even better an emulsion? An emulsion would be a dispersion of the wax. Not to get too technical there, but it's, it's basically possible to suspend um, waxy things and fatty things in water. Um, and here's the proof. But of course, um, what I did, now good credit to um, Ralph Dintz, who uh, is uh, a very famous presenter in, in Germany about all things to do with pipe and pipe tobacco. And um, now he has a channel called Raleigh's uh, Fife and Kino, put a link below, and he did a video on this Krydotite, which is uh, Canuba Wax Emulsion. Now this is a concentrate, and um, he talks very, very much in detail about how to use it, but you basically, if you want to use it on your pipes, you have to dilute this. So this half liter bottle will last me a lifetime, for sure. So I've taken this much and I've diluted it two to one. So twice as much water as the concentrate and made this stop, which will probably also last me a lifetime. But it's very practical to work with it that way. And the first thing I did was put a little bit, just with a cotton bud, a little cotton bud put it on the, um, the tenon of the pipe and it dries actually fairly quickly. You have to let it dry and it should then leave a little shiny coat of the canuba wax. And that actually worked just as well as what I was doing before to make it easier to get the stems into the pipe. But that's not, of course, the main use of Canova wax, uh, all pipe makers know it uh, for finishing the pipes off and, and giving them a nice polish. Um, so I started with one or two of my pipes where I thought perhaps that would improve them or they needed it. And regularly I was anyway um, with my briar pipes, of course, not every time I use them, no, that would be overdoing it, but maybe every fifth time I use them, I would give them a, a, a kind of 
a waxing and a shiny. And there are several commercial little tubs of uh, pipe wax that you can get. They, some of them just look like Vaseline. Others uh, have beeswax or, you know, there's all kinds of mixture. And some even said they have some canuba wax in it. Th those are alternatives. Um, and, and they work pretty, pretty good. And I will continue to use them until they're empty. But... Uh, I will also, in a number of my pipes, uh, use this solution because it, it's very thorough, it, it's very quick, it covers the whole surface, you just leave them for five, ten minutes maybe and they're pretty well dried, take a soft cloth, rub them all over and they come up with a very nice shine. There's only one caveat, and um, Rolf in his German video pointed this out, don't use the concentrate um, and be careful on the dilution. Um, I, I did two to one because uh, they said for wood surfaces, you know, that would be about right. Uh, but I noticed even this two to one solution here will darken only to about exactly this color. So if most of your briar pipes are this kind of shade or this shade, fine, you know, it won't uh, change the color appearance. But if you have a very light colored pipe, um, it will impart a little bit of darkness uh, to it if you dilute this to three to one or four to one you can play around with it and probably maybe it will be um, a lighter shade that the wax will impart on it then of course you'll have less of a wax coating um, less thick so you kind of have to feel your way with it i'm pretty happy with two to one most of my pipes are of that shade or darker, my briar pipes, so that's fine. Now this was the matches pipe that I received from um, Phil Rivera through Mike's um, giveaway. And it had a, a rather light shading to us, a little bit lighter than this, not dramatically. Um, and I thought would probably look a little bit nicer if I kind of restored it, if you like, to a slightly darker shade, and that has worked perfectly. You see? And I've sh just like I said, I took a, a cotton pad, took a little bit of that. It's probably good to wear gloves, um, those disposable gloves when you, when you do it swabbed it all over and let it dry and then just buffed it up with a very soft uh, cloth and it came out really nice and I think it actually looks now better, a little bit more attractive for me in this particular shade. I was just smoking this the other day, it's a beautiful pipe and smokes absolutely perfect. So if you're interested in alternatives for waxing and you're particularly interested in canoba wax canoba wax is of course natural so it's uh something that if you like has if it gets on your fingers or whatever at least you know it can't be so harmful because it's a natural wax normally carnauba is viewed as a friction wax so you normally have to make a fine dust and, and sort of rub it on and, and get it very hot with friction and then you can smooth it over a pipe and everything. But we don't all have those tools and, and it takes a lot more time. So the emulsion is a much easier way to, to spread it and um, put your canuba coating on a pipe or whatever you might want to use it for you could use it for wood, wooden objects as well 
and um, I wish they'd just make a smaller bottle, but uh, it's okay. It's not. It's about nine euro or ten euro for for this. Um, you can get it from Amazon Germany and Amazon UK. I don't know about in the US because it's a German product, but um, I'm sure in the United States there are similar uh, emulsion versions of Carnuba which are similar to this. Um, so that's, I think, been quite useful for me to um, wax my, my pipes and uh, lubricate my, my tenons, as it were, uh, which I wanted to tell you a little bit about. Hope, hope it's helpful to you. Music today is um, radio, a little bit of Vivaldi. Oh, my dear friends, that's it. Just those little technical um, updates, and I hope you find them useful. Look after yourselves, and uh, have a lovely rest of the week. I'll be back in uh, two or three days with a different topic about um, owls. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.